Okay guys, um, one thing that you're going to want to do a lot with Drum Machine Designer is make sample based custom kits, whether it's a sample based kit made of completely unique samples or you might want to make a sample based Drum Machine Designer kit of a classic old drum machine like an old Lin or an old Roland R8 or you know an SCI drum tracks or a DMX or you know a 909 whatever okay but when you're building a custom kit you have to start with a factory kit and obviously to build a sample based kit you've got to open the ultra beat and load your samples into the ultra beat voice slots connected to the pads one by one but the thing is the factory kit each ultra beat voice is going to have specific synthesis on okay and all that has to be reset for each voice etc so there's a quite a lot of other procedures we've got to do to make a fully finished custom kit so what you really want is a completely blank vanilla drum machine designer kit set up as like a template kit which you can use every time as your starting point to load samples into and build a sample based kit and this template completely empty vanilla kit will be set up with everything done as much as possible so that all you've got to do is the minimum amount of work to build a new custom sample based kit so I'm going to show you how to make that template kit and then in the next bit we'll move on and look at look at actually building a sample based kit from the template kit populating it and some of the quirks we have to work around um, due to the way Apple have implemented things okay so let's make this vanilla blank empty sample template kit that we can use as a starting point to build our sample based kits. So I'm starting with the after party factory kit. Uh, yours may not look exactly like this. I've moved a couple of voices, voice pads across from the other page. But this is the after party. Okay. Now, choose any pad, right click on the pitch, open the ultra beat. We don't need the drum machine designer now for a while. Okay, here's the ultra beat. First thing, turn that chain link icon off. Okay, now that there's all the after party voices, um, each one has its own synthesis and what have you. Um, so we're going to prepare all these ultra beat voices so they're all blank, empty, and set up, ready to accept a sample. Right. So I'll choose the first one, the kick, and come on. As I've shown you already, and for more on this watch the ultra beat tutorials on our channel as i keep saying because you really need to know ultra beat to get the best out of drum machine designer right and it's a very powerful drum box and sample player in its own right okay we go to this first ultra beat voice right click and we can initialize an ultra beat voice slot to any of these starting points as i mentioned before in a previous part i'm going to initialize it for sample now the after party kick sample still stays in the bottom oscillator but now the synthesis is all set initialized for sample now I'll just rename it kick and I'm going to do some little bit of housekeeping okay because it's not as vanilla as I wanted I'm going to turn off the LFOs section turn off the two bands of EQ they're not being used uh, this VEL down here if it's active turn it off then turn off max set the oscillator volume to 0 dB like that take the oscillator out of the filter even though it's not being used the filter it's not on <coughs> pardon me then we go to the fourth envelope here turn off sustain and um, set the decay time to two three hundred milliseconds or whatever but I'm going to make the decay shape like that yeah so any loaded sample will play along and then the decay cuts off the sound at the end of the sample. Okay. Now that's it. Now we unload the sample. The only thing we've got really in the synthesis now is this velocity sensitivity on the voice volume, meaning that when the um, voice is triggered by less velocity notes, the voice will play back quieter and quieter. Right? And that's it. We've totally vanillaed this voice ready to accept a loaded sample okay. and now we're going to copy this vanilla voice that we've created into all the other slots now you right click copy voice and sequence which copies the vanilla voice we've just created and then you go to the, the next oh yeah and I want to set the volume to I did that already didn't I four minus 40 B copy voice and sequence which copies the voice 
and go to the next voice, remember what it's called, click, right, and then paste in, right click and paste in the vanilla voice. Rename it, whatever it was called before, click. Now I'm going to go up doing this for all the major drums. So snare one, paste in the vanilla voice, rename, snare one. Clap, paste in the vanilla voice, rename, clap, well I'm just going to call it clap, not clap one. Snare two, paste in the vanilla voice, rename, snare two. Tom Low, paste in the vanilla voice, rename, Tom Low. Hi hat one, paste in the vanilla voice, rename, hi hat. One, Tom Mid, paste in the vanilla voice, rename Tom Mid. Hi hat two, paste in the vanilla voice, rename Hi oh, hat two. Tom Hi, paste in the vanilla voice, rename Tom Hi. And Hi hat open, paste in vanilla voice, rename Hi hat open okay now that's the first block of major drums they've all had the vanilla voice that we created in the kick pasted in they've all been renamed now we come to these two voices here perk and plate these are both percussion voices okay now these are not part of like a standard kit so I'm gonna paste in the vanilla voice for each of these and just title them perk paste in the voice rename perk so they're just like generic percussion voices then we come to the crash every kit has a crash paste in the vanilla voice rename crash shaker that's a kind of generic um, percussion it could be anything in whatever kit you're building so paste in the vanilla voice rename that for just perk then the ride every kit pretty much has a ride right click paste in the vanilla voice rename ride Snare three, very few drum machines have a snare three, so paste in the vanilla voice and I'm just gonna call this perk. Then kick two, a lot of drum machines have two kicks, a lot of the time you're gonna want two kicks, so paste in the vanilla voice and rename this kick two. So we've got a snare one and two and a kick one and two, right? The first kick and the second kick. Then up from here, these are all percussion or effects voices so I'm just going to paste in the vanilla voice and name each one perk even though they might originally have been effects voices paste in the vanilla voice rename perk 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 Paste in the vanilla voice, rename, perk. And this top voice, which is, isn't actually used by Drum Machine Designer, because Drum Machine Designer um, only uses 24. It doesn't use this top voice, because as you'd learn if you watch the Ultra Beat tutorials, this top voice in the Ultra Beat can be triggered from C3 upwards by playing it on a keyboard, like a synth, with different keys, sharps and flats, right, and all that. Um, whereas all these voices are just triggered by a single note. So, but we will paste in our vanilla voice here and rename it Perk. Right, just set the volume there where it slipped a bit. There we are. And now every single voice in the Ultra Beat has been renamed. Right, all the major kit items have been named and everything else that could be whatever a percussion or effect sound, it's just been titled Perk. All the major kit items have been named, and every single one of these voices is the vanilla voice that we created from the beginning. With a sample empty, everything's set in vanilla, and this amp envelope decay curve like that. Okay. Now, because we created the kick vanilla voice first and then pasted it into all the other voices, every other voice has got the same output assignment as the kick because we pasted in, pasted in all these, right? So we go up, voice two, set it to subgroup two, output three, four. Voice three, assign it to subgroup three, output five, six. Just go up like that. Voice four, subgroup four. Voice five, subgroup five. Voice six, subgroup six. Voice 
with seven subgroup seven eight subgroup eight nine subgroup nine ten subgroup ten eleven subgroup eleven and that's like output twenty one twenty two yeah let's just see what I'm doing there twelve subgroup twelve output twenty three twenty four thirteen subgroup thirteen output twenty five twenty six fourteen subgroup fourteen fifteen subgroup fifteen sixteen subgroup sixteen seventeen subgroup seventeen eighteen subgroup eighteen nineteen subgroup another nineteen twenty subgroup twenty twenty one subgroup twenty one twenty two subgroup twenty two twenty three subgroup twenty three twenty four subgroup twenty four and voice twenty five subgroup twenty five output forty nine fifty right done now each voice is assigned to its own separate out again there is all our vanilla empty sample ready ultrabeat voices done and prepared right okay uh, now close that it's a bit slow to close for video capture going on okay now we go to the um, the stack in, in the mix because the drum machine design it's still got the titles of the pads with after party written afterwards and all that right so we go to the stack, open up our stack, and we select the first channel inside the stack, the drum machine, the, the ultrabeat main output one two with the instrument on. Hold down shift and select the last ultrabeat output. So we have all the ultrabeat outputs highlighted. Right click on any uh, right click on any and create track which will create a track for every single ultrabeat output. Boom, there they all are. Now, now every output output has an a track, right? We can title these. Now we're going to go down, and we're just going to get rid of the after party bit, but keep the hyphen, yeah, like that, um, because you'll want this to be called kick one, and then if this is a lin kit, you'll want it to say kick one hyphen lin. Uh, if it's an R8, you want it to be called kick one hyphen R8 or hyphen 909 or hyphen whatever or whatever the custom name of your kit is. You know, if your kit is called, I don't know, um, I don't know, um, foo foo, then you'll want all your voice pads uh, to be called kick one foo foo, click foo foo, well, you know, etc. Right? So we'll just get rid of the bit after the hyphen, leave the hyphen. Again, a bit time consuming, but I only need to do this once. So I'm just going to go down here and get rid of, uh, come on, get rid of the word after party. And also, well, for the main drum items, I'm just, all I'm doing is removing the word after party. But then when we get further down, come on, to the perk voices, the ones that I reset to perk in, in the ultra beat, I'll just rename those perk because they still have whatever name the pad and the output has got. Now here's the perk after party, that's the plate after party, so I'm going to rename that as perk as well. It's just a generic, that'll be a slot that any percussion sound can go into, so just call that perk and this one just perk. Then the crash, leave that. This shaker again. I'm going to rename this perk hyphen space. That's it. The ride. We'll keep that as ride. Snare three. That one we're going to call perk. And get rid of the after party. Kick two. That'll stay as kick two because commonly kits have a second kick. Shaker one. This again is going to be perk and then the hyphen and then I'm just going to copy this one and paste it into all the others because they're all going to be called just perk C come on C this one come on V 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 
this one command V. Okay. Now the major kit items are titled. Kick, click, snow on, clap. I can just call this clap, not clap one. Clap, snare two, low tom, high hat, mid tom, tom mid, high hat two, tom high. Hi hat open, then you've got two generic percussion slots. Crash, another generic percussion slot. Ride, another generic percussion slot. Kick, and then generic percussion slots all the way to the top, right? To the bottom. And because we've renamed them here, select the after party main track. Uh, open the drum machine designer. They're all now the the titles, uh, you know, the um, the after party thing that follows each title has been taken away. So that's the renaming done. Okay. Now for the next bit, we need the uh, ultra beat open. So select any pad, right click on the pitch, open the old ultra beat again, like that. And now um, we don't want that open. Take that chain link off. And now we open up the stack again here because we've got a stack here now that we made a track for every output. Now what we need to do now is we've got to go through and um, we've just got to change something for the two kicks. Remember these two kicks started as after party kicks and all the drum machine designer kicks they use two oscillators. So because we've got a track now for every output we can bring in the smart controls and we can access the smart controls for each voice. Okay, now here's the thing. The kick originally was after party. We made it this this kick. Right? The kick, the first pad and its output and track there, and that's the ultra bit voice connected to it. Now originally this was a two oscillator voice and the smart controls here for that kick has a sub oscillator. And there isn't the length control like you get for the click, the snare, the clap and all the other voices, right? So we need to modify these smart controls. We need to get rid of that sub oscillator and replace it with a length control so that when we load our sample into the kick we can adjust the length of how long the sample plays back, shorter or full length, right? Now we need to move the distortion up and the envelope up and put the length here, the same as it is for all the other voices after the pitch. So I take the sub, which isn't going to be used, bring in the edit, take the sub, select it and select its mapping, delete select all its mapping and delete and now it's unmapped. Now take the distortion, select it, select all its mapping, copy, go to the unmapped, paste in the distortion parameters, mappings. Now the distortion has been moved up there, we've got a copy of it here now. Now we get the original distortion which we've moved up to there, select its mappings, delete them, it becomes unmapped. Get the envelope, select all its mappings copy them and to the unmapped paste in the envelope mapping so we've moved the envelope up and now this we can select delete its mappings and we've got a blank smart control there which we can assign to length now when you've got the track and the smart controls for the kick the first kick selected this track is the track for the first output in the stack, the ultra beat main output 1, 2, which has the actual ultra beat instrument on it. All the other tracks are for the additional separate ultra beat outs. These do not have the ultra beat instrument on. So only on the track smart controls for the kick can you do learn, because only this kick track, which is the track for the first output in the stack, has the actual ultra beat on it. Okay. So we're going to the kick here and we're going to map the envelope decay, fourth envelope decay for the length. All right. So learn and then just move this envelope decay. And that's done. Learn. Voice 01, the first voice, envelope for decay. All right? Now I'm going to give it a generic sort of length, zero. Uh, I'm going to give it a length of 300 milliseconds, 30000, okay, for maximum, and for minimum I'll give it a sort of generic 30 milliseconds, very short time for minimum.
and then rename it. Okay, what? Length. Boom. That's it. Done. So we've got rid of the uh, sub control and we've replaced it with length. So now when we load a kick sample in, we can adjust its length from here. Now the next kick, kick two. Now the problem is here is you can't do learn on this kick because this track and its smart controls are for one of the additional outputs for the ultra beat. And the extra outputs, the additional outs, they don't have the ultra beat on. The ultra beat instrument is only on the first pair of outs and this is the track for the first pair of outs, that's the smart control. Right? So we go to this kick two. Now first we want to move the envelope and distortion up. So the sub, select all of its mappings, delete them and it becomes unmapped. Now I'm going to move the distortion up to there, so select the distortion, select all its mappings, copy and we're going to paste them in here. Paste. So we've moved a copy of the distortion up to there, so we've moved the distortion up. Now the original distortion, select its mappings, delete. Now I'll get the envelope, we're going to move that up to this position here. Select the mappings for the envelope, copy, unmap pot, paste. We've moved the envelope up there, a copy of it up there. Select the envelope original now, select all its mappings, delete. This is now a blank empty smart control. But the thing is we can't now do learn and move the amp envelope decay for the second kick because only learn for the ultra beat, moving the ultra beat to, to do learn, you know, only moving any parameter on the ultra beat with learn latched works for the very first kick, the very first kick here, the first track, which is the first output of the ultra beat because only that has the actual ultra beat on. So to map something by moving a part of the ultra beat, we've got to do it on this, the smart controls for this track, which has the ultra beat on. So what we're going to do is we select this track, the original kick, but we select the second kick in the ultra beat. All right. Now we go to the length control, which is the length control for the first ultra beat voice, this kick, and we add an additional mapping. So we've got a, an extra mapping here. Now with the second ultra beat kick here selected, we latch learn and move its decay time. Undo learn. And now in this length control for the first kick down here, a second mapping has now been put in there. The envelope for decay for the 18th voice, the kick two. Now we select that, we copy it, then delete it. Now go to the actual track for the second kick, go to the map pot and paste that parameter in. And now we've got the 18th voice, envelope for decay, the kick to envelope for decay, paste it into this smart control for the second kick, 18th voice actual track. Okay, done. And now I'll title this length. And I'm going to give it a generic um, maximum time 300 milliseconds, 30000, and a minimum of 30. Boom, done. Right, that's that done. So every smart control for every voice now has pitch, length, and then envelope and distortion, and whatever else. All these other smart controls are connected to the effects and EQ on the output. We haven't touched the output for these voices at all. Everything else just works, right? But now every pad and, and every um, every uh, drum machine designer voice has a pitch and length. Okay, right. so when we load in our samples, every voice will have the length control. Whereas before, the kick one and two had the sub instead of the length. Okay, right. that's done. Turn off the edit and close smart controls, and we've done the renaming. Compact the stack. Is there anything else? No, that is it. We've made sure the outputs have been reassigned, everything. Right. Compact the stack. And now we're ready to save. So with the track selected, bottom of the library, save. That takes you to your user patch location. Now I've already 
created a template, empty template already. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to call this the empty template two, just a second one. Save, and there it is, DMD template two, a completely blank vanilla drum machine designer. Okay, all the pads just have a single title. It doesn't say the name of the kit afterwards. Right. Okay, and every smart control for every single voice has the pitch and length, and everything else is connected to the EQ and output effects. For the voice in the stack, for the ultra beat voice in the stack connected to the pads, that's all done. And um, if we look at the ultra beat, right click on the pitch, come on, right click on the pitch, open plug in window. Every ultra beat voice connected to each of the pads is vanilla, ready to accept a sample with this amp envelope decay curve, velocity sensitivity for the voice. And the major kit items, the Ultrabeat slots, have been titled. All the other slots, which can be whatever, different percussion things, different effects, they've just been titled Perk. All right. There it is. And that's that. I think that's everything I've covered. Come on, close. Ultrabeat's taken ages to close. So there's our, um, our template. And we can load this up any time and start to build a custom sample based kit from it. So, oh yeah, one last thing. Here's my DMD template 2. Well, it would have been called template without the 2, but I already made one. This is just the second one. Now, once you've made and saved this template kit, this blank empty template kit, with it selected, and if it's open, it, you must be in the stereo kit view with the um, by clicking on the icon and the title there. If it's closed, just you need the track selected. Right. Save again, but this time call it DMD template backup. And again, I'm going to call it backup two because I've already got the backup. Right. I'm making a second copy. Make another one called DMD template backup. And this means that you now have two in your library the original DMD template and the backup template. And you do that because when you open your template, your blank template kit, and start populating it with samples to build a, <clears throat> a custom kit, in the heat of the moment, and this has happened to me, you're working away, populating it with samples, and you're focusing on that, and you save, and you accidentally don't retitle it, and you overwrite the blank template kit with a, with some wherever you are in the process of building your custom kit, with samples loaded and everything, and then you've lost your template kit and you, forever. You ought to rebuild it again. So if you make this backup, if you ever accidentally overwrite the template kit as you're building a custom sample kit from the template, you've always got the backup. You just open the backup and resave and just resave as template. And then your template is empty and vanilla again. Okay. Okay, so <clears throat> we created a stack to rename the tracks which renames the pads and the um, the outputs you know we created a track for every output and renamed them um, and when then we saved and we saved a template and a template backup when you reload this stack isn't here um, drum machine drum machine so I'll load, I'll load up after party and I'll go back to user patches and I'll load up my template too and it doesn't reload with the stack okay, so there it is Vanilla, ready to go. All right, so let's move on now and look at populating it, uh, building a sample kit from it, and some of the things you have to do to do that. Okay.